the Savior. On daytime television, the face of God plasters the screen. His name is Noel, and he's an evangelical preacher. He claims to be the modern age's savior from corruption. The end is near in Noel's prophetic visions. God will come down on a fiery chariot to judge the living and the dead, procuring his elect for the recreated Garden of Eden. Brimstone and hellfire will burn all the false idols humanity has fallen prey to, namely pornography, celebrities, and technology. Noel says he has heard God's word, and our lackluster life will become full of brilliant and extravagant vicissitudes. Nations will fall, blasphemers will cry, and the people who purchase Noel's five-part DVD set for the low price of $19.99 will be saved from Judgment Day. Noel lives in a mansion in the hills of Clifton, New Jersey. His home oversees the city skyline. His wife is a wannabe model with Botox and plastic surgery from head to toe. Her face is mushed up like a pile of clay. Noel gives her a kiss every morning before he goes to his place of worship. She giggles when Noel touches her in a tender spot. He slaps her ass and drives away in his BMW 3 Series Gran Turismo. The engine revs down the street, waking up the affluent neighbors. Driving into a five-story parking lot, Noel parks his car in the closest spot. His name is engraved into the ground. A construction worker, who has bought every DVD collection ever made by Noel, did the job for free. He believes he is serving God's will. Money is a concern for sinners, Noel tells him. Noel gets out of his car and struts towards his place of worship. Actually, I wouldn't call it a place, it's, it's more like a palace of worship. Located in the middle of Westfield is Noel's humble church. It has stadium seating and a large stage that rivals the architecture of Madison Square Garden. Noel walks down the middle of the rows of seats. He imagines the faces of all the corrupt souls in awe at Noel's teachings. He sees the tears rolling down their putrid skin, cleansing their bodies of all their past transgressions. He remembers the women who flock to the front of the stage, falling on their face at the magnitude of Noel's soul. They can hardly contain their excitement when Noel utters a single word or phrase. Needless to say, Noel has them hooked. In a high-rise box overseeing the stadium is Noel's office. He sits back in his imported leather chair, propping his feet up on the desk. He opens the top drawer and places a legal notepad and a Bible on top. He opens the Bible and picks up a fountain pen from its placeholder. He decides today, when they go live, he will discuss how his followers have sinned against God, for he has sent them a multitude of signs and never listened. Now God has sent Noel to bring to light the pathway away from Satan's grasp into the warm, embracing arms of God. He sifts through the pages of the book, looking for key passages to support his claim. There are many. His door swings open, and Noel stops writing and looks up. Freddy, one of Noel's most devout students, is holding his mouth at the doorway. He grabs a trash can and pukes into it. There's blood on his hands. Noel grabs Freddy and brings him inside. Noel pushes Freddy on the couch and runs to the doorway, looking out for if anyone followed him. Freddy cries so hard he pants like a child. Noel slaps him across the face, asking him what happened. Freddy explains how he gave into temptation and the devil took hold of his body. He gave into lust and went to bed with a prostitute. Realizing his mistake and in a frenzy of fury, Freddy killed the prostitute. Through Freddy's ramblings, Freddy keeps asking if he's going to go to hell now. Noel doesn't respond immediately. He contemplates the backlash his church will fall under if the police find out what happened. Come with me, Noel says. Noel leads Freddy into the bathroom and washes his hands. Noel asks Freddy where he hid the body. Freddy is confused by the question but eventually tells him the exact location. The preacher tells Freddy to never tell anyone of what happened. Freddy explains it is unchristian for them to lie. But Noel shows him passages in the Bible where God kills to grow the mustard seed that is the kingdom of God. Rules can be bent. Freddy, reassured, falls to his face, praising Noel. Noel considers if what he is doing is wrong. Deep in his heart, he chose the Bible as his basis for morality because of its hypocrisy. He can never truly judge his actions. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to support the Simulation Podcast, you can donate to my Patreon account. Any amount would be extraordinarily helpful. The link will be in the description along with all my social media accounts.